Well, good morning, church. And what a day to be gathered together. Amen? It feels incredible out this fall weather. It's a little more like Colorado every day, and I'm here for it. Uh, if you haven't met me yet, my name is Gage. I'm still the new guy. I'm the, I have the honor of uh, getting to hang out and engage with your middle and high school students every week. And actually, if you are in high school this week and did not know, we have our 11th hour during this service right over here in the modular. This week is a little different since we have so many people getting confirmed. So we will be over here in a little bit to celebrate with you guys, but we're going a little rogue instead of uh, going off of the message in the series here like we usually do, which is, you know, going through Ephesians. This week, we are starting a series to learn what in the world is in the Bible anyway. So that's going to be great. If you have not checked out 11th Hour, this is an amazing time to jump in. High schoolers, you were invited. Come along with me. I'm going over there right as soon as I'm done here. If you're in middle school, your time is next week. But with that being said, as we get ready to worship together this morning, would you stand with me? Let's raise our voices in the reading of Scripture. Psalm 131. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and and forever. Amen. Let's sing together. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you here. Hey, Pervaux. Nice to see we have friends from Haiti in with us this morning. Good to see you both. Let's jump in and sing this beautiful old hymn. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that thou art thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, my life. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with the one. Riches I heed not, riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine in Let's see your voices, High King of Heaven, High King of Heaven. song we 
bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up. again worthy worthy of every song we could ever sing oh you're worthy worthy of all the praise we could ever bring yes you are worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Every other name, oh Jesus, Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Yes, you're worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Oh, come and lead me. And I will build my
sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above all names. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Yes, you are worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Yes, we live for you. We live for you, oh, our firm foundation. We live for you, oh, Jesus. Oh, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. That we live for you line gets me in this song. That I will build my lifeline gets me in this song because it's what I want to do. I want to build my life on Jesus. I want to. But I fall short so many times, over and over again. And a lot of times I feel like I am surrounded by people that are just getting it right. And I compare myself to those people when I forget that it's not about comparison, it's about inspiration, it's about supporting each other. Brian, Bishop Wallace is going to talk about that for y'all and for all of us coming up for our confirmands. And we're actually in the presence of a few people who have stepped out in miraculous and amazing ways in faith that are not here so we compare ourselves, but we're here to support them and to love them and to be inspired by them to go and be like Jesus. We have this, I don't, actually, this has never happened to my knowledge in the history of St. Peter's Church. We have representatives from the Lamb Institute, which is a children's home, an inner city school, and more in, Te, in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. We have Elsa and Fito Ortiz, who are CSO, C4SO pastors. And, and Elsa is the boots on the ground executive director in Honduras. There's a big fundraiser coming up this week um, for the Lamb Institute. We're excited to host that here. We also have uh, Father Valdemar Perval and a lot of the board for an organization called Light from Light. Light from Light is providing health care and a whole so much more through their clinic and their ministry in Haiti. So Perval is here somewhere too. Perval, right? Where, where, oh, there we are. <laughs> and the entire board. To have them in the same room, those are just two of our missionary partners. And then we also have big low country that's here that you'll hear about later. You're going to have an opportunity. It's amazing what we can do when we're all together. And they're not here to make us feel shame or anything. They're here to partner with us and to support us as we support them. So let's take a moment. Let's all pray. Let's pray silently. And then we'll pray together. Lord, I thank you for the ministry of others. So many times I'm fo so focused on what do you want me to do that I forget to open my eyes and allow myself to be inspired by the ministry of other people. And when I do that, it's usually when you Inspire me to move. Lord, I pray that you would call to our minds right now, however big or seemingly small, where can we make a difference? And when we think about that, and when anything pops up that seems to disqualify us, but I'm not this, but I'm not this, I'm not enough of that. Lord, let's, we give that over to you. Name that to yourself. Give that over to the Lord. 
And then if you're bold enough and you're willing, I invite you to pray this prayer with us together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Through your son, Jesus, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And friends, when we open our eyes, when we allow God to inspire us through the works that you're doing through other people, we can find peace and it opens us up that we can, we can serve as well. And we can share that peace. And that's what we practice and celebrate on Sundays when we say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to take a moment, pass the peace of Christ, say hello, keep your eyes open for what the Lord's doing. Friends, welcome to St. Peter's Church. Good morning. My name is Turner, if we hadn't had a chance to meet. I'm one of the pastors here. And gosh, with all the folks here today that are visiting, that, that support us from afar, or we support from afar, we've got families here, we've got kids getting, getting confirmed, we have Bishop Brian Wallace is here, we have our ministry partners here. It feels like we should just go and like, let's do, do the peace for the rest of the day. Um, so, I, But I encourage you to do that after service because Light from Light has amazing things going on. Lamb has amazing things going on. Big Low Country. We've got a lot of folks here. So take time after the service. Linger, as AJ likes to say, and hang out and get to know each other a little bit. I do want to call your attention to a few things that we have coming up where you can grow together, grow in relationship, in, in relationship with each other and with the Lord. Um, first up, for the women in the room, there are a couple things I want to make you aware of. On Sunday, on Sunday, October 27th from 4 to 5.30, you're invited to come celebrate a newly published book by our very own Constance Percato. If you don't know Constance, she's a, she's a fascinating and lovely woman here in the church, and she has, she has written a book of little devotionals, um, and it's quite wonderful. I encourage you to check that out. That's going to be at the home of Rennie, our um, women's ministry pastor, so you can reach out to Rennie for more information there. And then also for women, there's going to be a creative gathering on Saturday, November the 16th from 9 to 12, and that's going to be focused on hospitality, but ho hospitality is a mark of generosity of time and resources and love as we prepare to welcome people to our table and into our homes for the holidays. Um, but we ask that you register for that by November the 9th, so a lot of fun there. I also want to give a quick update, speaking of mission and outreach work. Um, I know everybody, if you think of mission and outreach, you think about the, the, the storms that just ripped through um, Georgia, North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, Florida. Um, Eric has just fit, gotten back from leading a team of five guys down to, uh, down to South Georgia where they did a lot of cleanup, they did a lot of tree removal and things like that. At this point, we are going to shift our focus a little bit to some mission partners in North Carolina. Um, obviously, the help is still needed everywhere. So um, Eric is in the process of working with the representative up there to find out exactly what they need so we don't give them a bunch of stuff that, they, that just gets piled up. When we have a list of specifics, which will hopefully be soon, Eric will communicate that to us, and we'll, we'll know a little bit better of what we can gather. And I believe Eric is also working to organize a trip to North Carolina. If anybody wants to jump on that, we don't know exactly what, what we'll be doing yet, but cleaning up, um, 
it could be any number of things. So if you have questions about that, reach out to Eric. And if you want to donate just financially to that, you can give to uh, you can give to St. Peter's, but do it. You can earmark it to the Mercy Fund because funds will go from that fund to um, to hurricane relief. So I just wanted to keep you posted on that. Um, and of course, we have these. You can grab one of these sheets on the way out. The, this is a way to get connected in just groups. They are small groups, but they make a big impact. Anyone on here is open, and you are invited. And if you need more information, it has contact information on there, or you can always reach out to me. And I also invite you to fill out a Connect card. You can drop it in the offering basket. That's how you sign up for our e-news. Whew. I feel like the, the micro-machine man, if anybody remembers that guy. Um, at this point, I would like to invite our reader forward. As we continue in worship, let's open up our hearts and minds and listen for the word of God this morning. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 5. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Our teaching text comes from Psalm 131. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. The word of the Lord. Good morning, friends. My name is Eric, and I'm the pastor of CARE here. I'd love to give a you are here, as we're all coming from different places this morning, to just know where we are exactly. This is St. Peter's Church. We are an Anglican church in the Diocese of C. Foreso, which means churches for the sake of others. We span the nation, which is very unique. You don't see that uh, in the ACNA, the Anglican Churches of North America. We're, we're very unique in that. It's 56 congregations, and we are led by Bishop Todd Hunter and our suffragan bishop, Brian Wallace, who is here today to lead us in confirmation. Let me tell you that the past 14 months have been a huge blessing to us in C4SO as Bishop Brian has joined the team to lead us. Uh, we feel more connected across uh, our churches. We feel more connected to the leadership, and we're being led really, really well by some amazing people. Um, there are a few of us who have gotten to know Bishop Brian and his wife, Lisa, and they are incredible, wonderful people. They hail from Austin, Texas. They have three grown men, and they have five wonderful grandchildren. I wanted to just tell you, make a, a personal connection for, for us to them, is that um, many of you know about Big Low Country and how they, um, they come alongside um, citizens who have uh, different abilities, and they give them um, joy and presence with each other, and they give them jobs, and just a, a wonderful time that they're leading us in, that Kate and the team are leading us. Bishop Brian's grandfather ran a farm that had 30 residents of people with special needs, that they would work meaningfully together. And that's just something, when I found that out, I thought, you're our guy, you know, lead us. And so Bishop Brian, come lead us this morning. Would you welcome Bishop Brian today? Thank you, Father. Thanks for having me. It's really good to be back in South Carolina. I have family. My, they're in the back. You live in Greenville. And my, parent, my mother lived 34 years in Aiken uh, for a long time, just before we moved her last year. And um, my grandfather that he just mentioned was really my Christian heritage in my family. He had a sixth grade education from a one-room schoolhouse in upstate Vermont. 
and then found himself just trying to obey Jesus and cared for those who didn't have folks caring for them. So he just modeled love and kindness uh, to folks. Well, you heard I'm going to be preaching out of Psalm 131. I'm going to be talking to those of you here in the front row. You are the compromands, folks who are proclaiming anew, afresh, your faith in Jesus Christ. And I want to talk about this psalm because I think in it are some invitations to you about how to live your life for the rest of your life. And I hope you hear this morning that our goal isn't that you just get through junior high if you're in junior high or high school or college, but that you walk with Jesus for the rest of your life. Our greatest vision of success for you isn't that you live in a big house or get a great job or get a college scholarship, but that's when you're 25 and 35 and 45 and 55. As many days as God gives you that you walk with him in love and humility. That would be the definition of success for you. And I want to talk about this passage because I think it really has something to say to you. It really has a lot to say to me, so I'm really preaching to myself in this too. Let's pray just a moment. Father in heaven, we ask that you would be our teacher. Would you open our minds that we would understand? Would you speak to our, our hearts that we would experience you and feel your love and presence with us? maybe your conviction, and would you empower our hands and feet that we can live out what you're inviting us to do and be with courage. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my first memory of this passage, Psalm 131, was about 30 years ago. I was a young budding leader in a national movement. I was an up-and-coming leader, and my boss was coming from out of state to, to, to Austin, to kind of do what I thought was to spend an entire day with me giving me great leadership coaching. I thought it was a day for me to go from good to great. I had set my sights pretty high. I had big dreams for myself and for the movement I was leading. But instead, what happened is we got to a lake house that a friend of mine ran, owned, and Doug, my boss, put me on the back porch and handed me a single sheet of paper were the words of Psalm 131 on it. And he says, read this for a while. I'm going for a walk. He was gone for two hours. He came back and we uh, had lunch and we discussed the passage. And he repeated that pattern two more times. I had six hours alone with the shortest psalm in the entire Bible. <laughs> and I didn't get it. I was frustrated. I was upset. I didn't understand what God was doing in my life or what Doug was trying to do as a wise and loving leader in my life. Now I understand that he was inviting me to a different way of being, to ground and root my life in the story of God, to find rest in the care and parenting of God, and to set my hope on God alone. That's what this psalm is about. Now, let's start with the first verse. It says, my heart is not lifted up or my heart is not proud. My eyes are not too raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great or too marvelous for me. Now, as we read this morning, many translations of this passage read, my heart is now not proud. Now, we know what we say about people who say they're not proud. No one who has any humility would deny that there's at least a little pride left in their life. It's like our youngest son when he was a toddler at two or three, he would be in, strapped in the car seat in the back seat and invariably on any trip of any duration, he would say, I'm not tired. <laughs> Dead giveaway, right? He was exhausted and 30 or 40 minutes later, he would, 30 seconds later, he would be asleep. I'm not proud, my heart's not lifted up, is an odd thing to pray. So what's going on here? I think it's not the psalmist declaring a state of being as much as it is a decision to choose a way of being. When we pair the first half of the verse with the second, we begin to understand what's going on. The second half says, I don't occupy myself with things that are too great or too marvelous for me, he says. You see, this is the psalmist admitting that there are things that are beyond him, things above his pay grade, so to speak, 
Again, it's a decision to a certain way of life, one that chooses to let God be God and to take our place in the world that's in keeping with the most important truths in the universe. Like, God is God. He's creator. I'm a creation. God is eternal. I'm temporal. God is powerful. And I'm limited. To pray this psalm is to decide to let God be God. To let him run the universe, let him run my life, let him run my family, my neighborhood, and to provide for me day by day just as he chooses. It's a decision not to set my sights on things that are beyond my grasp because God's the only one who can and should reach that far. Eugene Peterson renders this first verse in a way I think that helps us understand this decision. He reads this way, God, I'm not trying to rule the roost. I don't want to be king of the mountain. I haven't meddled where I have no business or fantasized grandiose plans. See, you and I have no business trying to run the universe, run our world, run our school, run our neighborhood, or run our family. It's too much for us. It's the domain of Jesus, the king of the universe. But it gets complicated when we understand that the psalm was written by King, King David. What's beyond the pay grade of a king? But hear this, the psalm's not an invitation to passivity. The decision to take our place in the world under God is not to abandon our roles, our callings in the world that God gives each of us, our invitation to use our hands and feet to glorify God. We're called to be God's hands and feet in the world, to proclaim the gospel wherever we go, to feed the poor, clothe the naked, visit the prison, to protect the widow and the orphan. We are still called to put our hands to the duties, tasks, and engagements of our various callings. We can't shirk them, but we can't try to run the world. We're not to run it. That's God's job, not ours. It's not our part in the story. But how do we go about living our lives and being faithful to our callings in a world without overstepping our bounds? That's hard work, isn't it? it? I think it helps us to understand how the Hebrew understanding of the world thought of the nature of a day. For thousands of years, the Hebrew culture considered the day to begin when the sun went down. Our basic understanding of the day begins when the sun comes up, or more importantly, when my alarm goes off and my feet hit the floor. That's when my day starts. But think about our mindset shift if we understand that the start of the day begins at sunset. The day does not begin with my activity, my agency, or my energy in the world. No, the, be the day begins and I go to bed. It's like saying I'm not the most important thing going on in the universe. The day will begin with my inactivity and the God who never sleeps will be at work ruling the world and starting the day because he doesn't need me. He's sufficient on his own. He invites me in. He, he lets me be a participant, a valued and important partner in his work, but he doesn't need me. He can run the universe pretty well before without me. He's been doing it before I was here, and unless he comes back, he'll be doing it when we're gone. The psalm's not ultimately, again, an invitation to passivity. It's an invitation to humility, the opportunity to let God be God. Now, I admit that this is a countercultural way of living. You won't find this invitation in any of the business journals, self-help books, or Instagram followers that you might subscribe to. Not even Taylor Swift, and as great as she is, right? The advice of the world is this. Seize the day. Exert your power. Take charge of your life. And there are some things that require us to act and try and exert some effort. That's really true. But Peterson says this, but what's described in Scripture as basic sin... The sin of taking things into our own hands, being our own God, grabbing what is there while we can get it, is now described by our culture as basic wisdom. Improve yourself by whatever means you're able to. Get ahead regardless of the price. Take care of me first. 
Now, David, the author of this song, was a king, remember. He had to wake up each morning to make decisions that influenced the political, social, religious, and family life of every person in the nation. And you could argue all the nations around him. But it's not an invitation to passivity. I'm not asking you to sit by and idly do nothing. Again, it's an invitation to humility. There's a way of going about our life under God and for God rather than ourselves. It's hard work because I really care about the work I do, and I think you do too. Your work has consequence, and there's issues going on in the world that really, really matter. Sometimes reminding myself that I'm not God is not enough to curb my appetites for success. I crave the feel-good sense of being noticed and praised. I'm a three in the Enneagram. I am addicted to success. How about you? It feels good to get good grades, to have people like you, have people invite you to their parties. But sometimes reminding myself that I'm not God's not enough to curb that appetite. The next step for me is getting still and quiet. Remember, he says, my heart's not proud. My eyes aren't raised too high. I'm not going to occupy myself with things that only God can do. I'm going to try to live that way. So... I will calm and quiet my soul like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child will be my soul within me. Calm and quiet don't come naturally in my world. How about you? There's nothing naturally calm or quiet about my family, my job, my commute, which for me is almost always a TSA pre-line. And how come there's always someone in front of me trying to take their shoes off? Don't do that or take your stuff out of your bag. It bothers me. It awakens my inner infant. (laughs) I get fussy. (laughs) It takes work to get quiet though, doesn't it? For most people, it's a deliberate choice that happens with planning, care, and decision. It's a discipline. It's a, a spiritual discipline to be quiet and calm. In my research for my doctorate, I studied exemplar leaders, people who were doing Christian mission around the world in various forms, who were thriving emotionally, spiritually, and relationally. And I studied what they did in spiritual practice to help them get that way. What was fascinating to me was that all of these thriving leaders only had one spiritual practice in common. Only one. And it was that they each took regular retreats. Part of their habit as leaders, their discipline in the world, was to remove themselves from their daily activity. They literally put the world on mute regularly. It was so they could cultivate the ability to hear the voice of Jesus. The voice of God's love, his control, his power, his wisdom, his goodness. That he's good and he wants to be good to me. Now, it's hard to be quiet while holding a noisy phone that's constantly begging for your attention and sending you messages about your relative value in the world, and you never measure up to your cell phone. It's also impossible with a constant barrage of Fox News or CNN blaring from your television telling you what to believe. We need to silence the world and its messages about our values and our security, which are almost always rooted in lies. Quiet and calm are not ignorant of real issues in the world. They simply do not let the world around them determine what's important, what's valuable, or what is true. I think this is the core challenge of our discipleship. This is the core hardest thing that you're going to deal with as compromise going forward in your life. What are you going to decide gets to choose what's important, valuable, or true? Now, I think Jesus talks about this in the parable of the soils. Have you ever studied that in uh, in your high school group? The parable where there's different kinds of soil. There's four kinds. There's the first one, the hard pan soil, where the seed of God's word gets eaten by birds because it can't penetrate at all. There's the rocky soil where the seed sprouts up but, and, it, and it grows, but it, it doesn't have any root because of the rocks. And so when the sun beats down, trials of life, it burns it up and it goes away. And then there's the good soil, where the seed deeps, goes deeply in, and it produces a crop 30, 60, and 100-fold. More, 30, 60, 100 times what was planted. 
But you know, there's the fourth soil, the weedy soil, where the crop still grows, but it gets a little choked out by the weeds. It still grows, it still even produces a crop, but it's not as fruitful as it possibly could be. I think this soil describes almost every person in this room. It certainly describes me, and I think it describes all of you. Jesus' commentary on this was that the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things choke out our lives and make them unfruitful. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things, they're allowed in my life. Like I was 30 years ago when I wanted more, more leadership, more skill, more notice, more place. I was wrestling with trying to find if I belonged anywhere in the universe. But the picture of a weaned child is not that we stay small, dependent, or infantile. Rather, it's the picture of a person who can now be at peace enough to enjoy a relationship with their parent, confident that the parent knows what we need, and is loving enough to provide it. He will provide food, clothing, meaning, value, place in the world. It's the word picture of seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I'll take care of the things that I know you need. The invitation is to a still and quiet heart that lets God be in charge of the very real cares and concerns the troubles in the world and in our lives and our families and in our school and on our teams. In a way that cultivates greater relationship with God and intimacy with Him because we are letting Him care for us and the things that matter most to our hearts, the things that give us fear at night, the things that keep us awake, the, the things that make us wonder, are we alone or is He with us? But a weaned child can now say no to the cares of the world. They can say, I can get involved, but they're not mine to fix because God's the leader of the universe. I can say no to deceitfulness of wealth. I can be content with what I have because the God of the universe is my parent. He loves me. He cares for me. He knows what I need. I can order my desires so that I can no longer be driven to achieve, to attain control, to be in that group, be liked by those people, and do whatever it takes to be in the in crowd. Because I belong to Jesus. And there's nothing in the world that can change that. I'm now free to place my hope in something worthy of my whole life. God himself. That's how David ends his psalm. O Israel, confirmants, St. Peter's, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. I've said three or four times already, this psalm is not an invitation to passivity. But there is also a promise that we can do our work in the world with rest, confidence, and peace of one whose hope is in the Lord, who loves us more than we can ever ask or imagine. If you're struggling with that this day, would you invite God? Would you have the courage of prayer to invite God to give you the ability to see how much you're loved? In the midst of my life, with all of its cares and concerns, with all of its duties and burdens, I will choose to still and quiet my soul. Because God's got this. God's got me. God's got you. God's got you. God's got your church. He's got your family. You can trust him. So why did David write the psalm? It's the shortest one he ever wrote. It's literally a 30-second reminder, I think, to himself that he wasn't alone. That there's something more important, somewhere more powerful than all the challenges that he faced in being a king of a nation surrounded by enemies. Again, I think this is how this psalm worked in his life. Purposely, just three verses so he could carry it with him everywhere he went. A mini-retreat, so to speak, from the cares of the world and the siren call of wealth, and the constant desires for other things in his life. 
And that's what this psalm has become for me 30 years later. I carry it with me everywhere now. It's with me. It's kind of in me. It's a touchstone that connects me back to the very real love of the Father. Because I live in a world that tells me I'm abandoned. That no one cares about me. That God doesn't know what's going on in the world, let alone my own very life. It's a reminder that of the things that are the most true in the, in the world. I can take my place in God's story. Because he's the ruler of the universe. I can rest in God because he loves me. And I can hope in him because he's good and kind. And he'll never go away. Would you pray with me? Let's take a 30-second retreat with me. Oh, Lord, our hearts are not proud. We don't want them to be. We don't want to rule the roost. We don't want to rule our lives. We want to let you do that. We're not trying to put our hands on stuff that only you can do and should do. We turn it all over to you. And would you give us rest? Rest from our working, our worries, our challenges. Help us trust you like a child trusts a mom. Help us sit with you and let you be God. Build our lives full of hope. Hope in something that really is worthy of our hope, Jesus Christ himself. Confirmants, St. Peter's, Church of God, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Reverend Father and God, we present these persons to receive the laying on of hands. Have they been adequately prepared? They have. Now, friends, it's essential that those who wish to be confirmed in the church publicly confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, become his disciples, know and affirm the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, and have received instruction in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments in the catechisms of this church. God's grace is imparted in baptism through which we are made God's children by adoption and given the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Spirit manifested in gifts and fruit, we are enabled to be God's people for the sake of the world. Now, these candidates desire publicly to confess their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you're here, to publicly confess your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he's your savior and your commitment that is to that you would want to follow him all the days of your life. They desire the strengthening of grace through the laying on of hands that the Holy Spirit may fill them more and more for their ministry in this church, the church, and in the world. Now, you're about to make some promises, though your answers are going to be on the screen. You're going to be, you know, renouncing things like the devil. Nothing big, really <laughs> important. Be loud, okay? Be bold. These are important declarations you're making. Do you renounce all the devil's work that draws you away from God? I oh, wait a minute. You can do it a lot better. Let me do that again. With This time, mean it, right? Do you renounce all the devil's work that draws you away from God? I renounce do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy God's creation? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ 
and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and his love? Do Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Now, congregation, I'm about to ask you a question, and it's the most important part of confirmation in my view. I'm about to ask you if you will do all in your power to support them. And why are we asking you that? Because they cannot follow Jesus apart from you. No person in the history of the universe has ever been invited to follow Jesus alone. And no child has ever been invited to follow Jesus by themselves. They need your ch- their church. They need you to teach them, care for them. They need you to come alongside them when they're destitute or lonely or afraid. They need you to say that they're more than the things that they achieve in their life. That they're valuable image bearers of the living God. Amen? They need you to demonstrate not perfection, but progress. They need to demonstrate that you ask forgiveness, ask for help, live in community. They need you to be real human beings that don't expect them to be perfect. Can you do that? Now, if your answer to this question isn't loud enough, I'm going to make you do it again. (laughs) Not kidding. I made the first hour do it twice. They need to hear that you're with them. Not just in words today, but in the way you act as this church in their life for the rest of their life. Again, the goal isn't that they just make it through high school, but to raise families who love and follow Jesus, and you raise kids who follow Jesus, and grandkids who follow Jesus. Amen? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Amen. Amen. Would you stand and we will declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, this passage these kids have studied as they prepared for this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. Aiden. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Aiden, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more till he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Aiden, I mark you with the sign of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I pray that God would give you power, strengthen in your inner being to know how high and wide and long is the love of God in Christ Jesus. That you would be his forever and you would know his love. That his word would well up in your heart every day, that God would give you passion for the scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Sadie with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more till she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Sadie, I mark you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray that God would well up in you a heart of courage, that you would never be afraid to name Jesus as your Savior and Lord, your friend, 
And that your mouth would be bold to proclaim the goodness of God everywhere you go. That you'd never be afraid of where you belong. And you would always know that Jesus is with you. Amen. Defend our Lord, this your servant Olivia, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in the Holy Spirit more and more as she comes to the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Olivia, I mark you with the sign of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for your call on Olivia's life, that you've named her, that you see her, We pray that you would give her the courage of your calling on her life, that she would lean in and not be afraid, and that there would be adults who see it, name it, and bless it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Defend our Lord this, your servant, grace that with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Grace, I mark you with a sign of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I feel the Lord is wanting me to say that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. That you would make know the joy of God, that he's with you, over you, with always in your presence. And that his joy would be your strength as you face loneliness or questions. That the joy of God would be your strength as you declare his goodness and choose him as your Lord every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Sammy with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever in daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Sammy, I mark you with the sign of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, would you inflame Sammy's imagination to put his hands and heart to things that only you would have him desire that he would desire righteousness and goodness, that he would desire his friends come to know you, that he would desire being known for a person who follows you more than you'd want to be known for anything else, and that your power would well up in him and enable it to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Sassy, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever. Daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Sassy, I mark you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray that God would give you abundance of faith, that he would give you the gift of faith, strong faith, Faith that can weather opposition, questions, disappointments. Faith that would cause your heart to leap whenever Jesus is with you. Anytime you hear the words of Scripture spoken. May God give you love for the Word. And may He fill you by His Holy Spirit. For His glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Paul with your heavenly grace, that by he may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit, that he more and more he walk with you in fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Paul, I mark you with the sign of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Paul, we invite God's power to work in and through your lives for the poor, for the oppressed. For those who need justice. For those who are far away from you who need to come near to you. 
Would you empower Paul by your Holy Spirit to be used to make kingdom life come everywhere he goes? In Jesus' name. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Ella with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit, more and more until she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Ella, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, would you protect Ella? Would you surround her with friends and leaders and mentors? who would hold her fast to you? Would you empower her by your spirit to love the scriptures and that every time she comes near to worship, her heart would just sing? That she would experience more joy in the presence of her family and church than anywhere else in the world? Would you do this thing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Adrian with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in the Holy Spirit more and more and more until he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Adrian, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Adrian, peace over you, wherever there's anxiety may be peace come. Wherever there's concern, may there be the presence of Jesus in your life. Where there, wherever there is sorrow, may there be the words of Scripture and the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. May your strength be the goodness and the presence of God now and forever. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Ryan, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever in daily increase in the Holy Spirit more and more till she comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Ryan, I mark you with the sign of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ryan, stay here. I think the Lord wants to tell you that he sees you and he's pleased that your heart loves him, that your heart fears him in the right way, and that he wants to empower your life, that it would be filled to every measure of the goodness of God, and that your, your life and your voice would proclaim him everywhere you go. In Jesus' name, amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Nolan, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more as he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Nolan, I sign you with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, would you make Nolan a prayer warrior? Would you well up in him faith that enables him to pray for others? healing and faith, joy and hope. Would you make him patient, steadfast? In Jesus' name, amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Chase with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever. Daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into the fullness of your everlasting kingdom. Chase, I mark you with a sign of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Chase, I pray courage over your life that the Spirit of God would embolden your life with courage to believe, courage to act, courage to hold on, courage to say no, courage to say yes. 
the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, would you, as a congregation, feel free to reach out your hand and move towards these confirmands as we pray these prayers over them. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others. In the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world and witness in your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Amen. Would you welcome these in as the newly confirmed? As we come encouraged by the faith of others, may the Holy Spirit continue to encourage us at the Lord's table this morning. My friends, the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we are grateful for these words and the recounting from the Apostle Paul that you have a story you're inviting us into every single moment. And so thank you, Lord, for inviting us today. Thank you for spiritually making this for us, the body and blood of Christ, that it would nourish our souls deeply this morning and encourage us in the faith. Amen. Would you proclaim the mystery of our faith with me? That Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Would you stand as you're able? Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our servers forward. My friends, as you come forward this morning, if you are ready to receive, would you cup your hands and receive the bread? And then you will dip that into the cup. The cup that is the new covenant and the new way that Christ is inviting us into And if you're not receiving today, if your child's not receiving yet, uh, just have them cup their hands or cross their arms, and our servers would love to pray a blessing over us, over them today. In whatever way you come, come hungry and expectant to be the body of Christ together. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my 
Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from me Take my silver gold not a might would I withhold take my intellect and use every power as you choose here am I
Well, I searched the world It couldn't fail me A man's empty praise The treasures that fade Are never enough And you came along And put me back together Every desire Is now satisfied here in your love Oh, there's, there's nothing, nothing better than you There's nothing better than you There's nothing Nothing is better than you and I'm not afraid The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's to glory you're the only one who can sing that again you turn more into dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn praise into gardens turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can, you're the only one who can, oh there's nothing better than you, there's nothing better than you, Lord there's Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. day to worship and to see these young people say yes to Jesus. I know. And so I, I have two invitations for you today. First of all, 
If you would like to meet Bishop Wallace in the corner, if you want to talk to him about C C4SO or what he does, or if you just would like to say hello, because it's such an honor to have him here. You can meet him over by the prayer wall. Also, Big Low Country has a pop-up shop outside. If y'all don't know who Big Low Country is, it's a ministry that we house here at St. Peter's, and they offer God-centered, meaningful work in a place of belonging and respect and dignity for adults with special needs. So please go and visit them at their shop today. And also, please receive this benediction. May God's presence go with you. May God's purpose be for you. And may God's power move through you in all that you do and to all whom you meet. Amen.